Hello and welcome to Serendipity. I'm Mrs. Wheelis, one of the librarians at the Summit Library. And I want to welcome you today and tell you that we're doing a program about Coco, the huge gorilla who learned to communicate with human beings by doing sign language. Her teacher was Dr. Francine Patterson. And she first met Coco when the gorilla was only one year old, just a little baby gorilla, really. And she started working with her then and worked with her all through her life, teaching her a thousand different signs for words. It's a very interesting and heartwarming story, the way they loved each other. I learned so much in studying about Coco, and one of the main things I learned is that people generally think of gorillas, I know I did, we think of gorillas as being really scary and terrifying, but they're actually gentle creatures. They're quiet, gentle creatures. And I learned that through these books I've been reading. Now, I want, you, I want to show you, well, we'll show you this again at the end of, toward the end of the program. But these are pictures of the different signs that Dr. Patterson taught Coco. Experts tell us that gorillas will never be able to speak the way we do because their throats are made differently. But we found another way for them to speak, Dr. Patterson did, through sign language. To give you an example, this sign, you do it with me. Make a fist and then stick up your thumb and put it to your mouth. That means to drink. So if Coco wanted a drink, she would go like this. And Dr. Patterson or one of her helpers would give her a drink. Another one that I think is kind of funny is this means lip. And the way that developed was from lipstick. So this means lip, and it can also mean woman. So that's just to get you started on what the signs are like and what happened with Coco as she learned. Now, the main book we're going to be reading in just a minute is called Coco, and it's by Dr. Francine Patterson. This book, called Coco Love, is also by Dr. Francine Patterson, Coco's teacher. And there you see her teaching Coco when she was very little. Now these signs that I showed you a few minutes ago come from this book. And I recommend this book as well as the book Coco, which I'm going to read to you now. I actually recommend both of them. This song is called Abba Dabba Dabba. And it's about a chimpanzee and a monkey with a long tail who fall in love. And I learned this song when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> abba dabba 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 dab, said the chimpy to the monk. Abba dabba 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 dab, said the monkey to the chimp. All day long they'd chatter away, all night long they were happy and gay. Singing and swinging in a hot tongue Said the monkey 
This book is entitled Coco's Story, and it's written by Dr. Francine Patterson, Coco's teacher. The photographs are by Dr. Ronald H. Kuhn. Young Coco. Coco was born at the San Francisco Zoo on the 4th of July in 1971. She was named Hanabiko, a Japanese word meaning fireworks child, but everyone called her Coco. She was three months old when I first saw her, a tiny gorilla clinging to her mother's back. I asked the director of the zoo if I could try to teach her sign language. He said no. I didn't see her again for a whole year. I started visiting Coco then at the zoo every day. At first, I didn't think Coco liked me. She ignored me. She even bit me when I tried to pick her up. Slowly though, because I never failed to come to see her every day, Coco began to trust me. Each morning, I would carry her around the zoo on my back to visit the other animals. When we passed the baby elephant, Coco would cling to me tightly scared by the loud trumpeting noise the elephant made whenever we went near. Teach Coco just three words in sign language, drink, food, and more. I taught the zoo assistants who helped in the nursery to form the sign food with their hands. They used this sign whenever they gave Coco anything to eat. Drink, I signed each time I gave Coco her bottle. I formed her small hand into the sign for drink too. One morning, about a month after I began working with Coco, I was slicing fruit for her snack. Coco was watching me. Food, she signed. I couldn't believe my eyes. Food. She clearly signed again. Coco had communicated with me. I was so happy and Coco could tell I was excited. She grabbed a bucket, plunked it over her head and ran wildly all around the playroom. By age two, Coco signs were more than just simple one word requests like up, drink, and more. Now Coco was learning signs quickly and stringing them together. Their mouth, mouth you there, Coco signed when she wanted me to blow fog on the nursery window to draw in with our fingers. Pour that hurry drink hurry, she signed when she was thirsty. Coco had a big birthday party when she turned three. One of her presents was a pair of toy binoculars. Look, she signed, marching proudly with the binoculars around her neck. She carefully ate almost all of her birthday cake with a spoon. But when it came time for the last bite, Coco couldn't resist. She scooped the cake up with her hand and stuffed it into her mouth. Coco leaves the zoo. Coco was three when we decided to move to the grounds of Stanford University, where I was a graduate student. Here she would be able to meet with a young male gorilla from a nearby wildlife park. It was much quieter here than at the children's zoo. I hoped our new location would help Coco concentrate on her language lessons without any distractions. At first, Coco was like any frightened gorilla. She made angry display charges at the door of her trailer. Go home, she signed, wanting to get out. She didn't know yet that this new site for her trailer was home. It was a hard adjustment, 
but finally she adjusted to her new home at Stanford University. By the age of five, Coco knew more than 200 words in sign. I recorded every sign that Coco used and even videotaped her actions so I could study her use of sign language later. The more signs Coco learned, the more she showed us her personality. She argued with me, displayed a very definite sense of humor, and expressed strong opinions. A visitor signed to Coco, you have pretty eyes. Coco stroked her finger across her nose. That was the sign for false. Coco even used sign language to tell lies. Once I caught her poking the window screen of her trailer with a chopstick. What are you doing? I signed to her. Coco quickly put the chopstick in her mouth. Mouth smoke? She answered with signs, pretending to be smoking the chopstick. <laughs> One time I caught her chewing a crayon when she was supposed to be drawing a picture. You're not eating that, are you? I asked Coco. Lip, she signed, and she quickly took the crayon out of her mouth and moved it across her lips like she was putting on lipstick. When Coco is very bad, she is sent to a corner in the trailer. Stubborn devil, she signs to herself. She knows she has been naughty. But soon she turns around and signs, sorry, need hug. But Coco was often more playful than naughty, using sign language to let me know when she wanted to play a game. She signed, time, quiet, chase. That meant she wanted to play hide and seek. Coco, where are you? I'd call out. I'd look in the oven <laughs> and search through the cupboards. I would always act very surprised when she came out from where she was hiding. Coco used the sign she had learned to play jokes on people. One day, my friend Barbara saw Coco building a nest out of white towels. Coco signed, that red. You know better, Coco. What color is it? Red, red, red. Coco kept signing. Barbara gave up. She had thought Coco had learned the sign for white, but she saw Coco grinning. Red. Coco signed again. Then Coco carefully picked a speck of lint off of one of the white towels. Coco held it up for Barbara to see. What color was it? Red. Coco and Michael. When Coco was five years old, I thought it was time to find a gorilla companion for her. One day I said to Coco, a new baby is arriving. She was pleased by the idea of a baby. Wrong, old, Coco signed to me when she first saw the frisky little gorilla. This playmate did not fit Coco's idea of a baby. The new gorilla was already more than three years old. He had been named King Kong. I changed his name to Michael because real gorillas do not act like King Kong in the movie. Real gorillas are usually very shy and gentle creatures. I wanted to teach a second gorilla sign language and I also hoped that one day Coco and Michael would mate and have a baby gorilla. We started to teach Michael sign language as soon as he came to live with us. Of course, he hasn't learned as many signs as Coco yet, but Michael is a good student. 
he often concentrates even longer on his lessons than Coco does. At first, Coco was very jealous of her new playmate. She signed Michael names and blamed him for things he hadn't done. She signed stupid toilet, pointing to Michael. But Michael answered back, stink bad squash gorilla. So in sign language, they're calling each other names. But Coco and Michael also love to play together and sign to each other often. Coco signed, Tickle, please, tapping her armpit. Michael would jump toward her to find a good spot to tickle. Then they would wrestle together. They banged on the walls, tumbled and kicked. It was rough, but it was still play. Coco and Michael love to ride in my car at Stanford. Go there, Coco would sign, <laughs> acting like a backseat driver. She knew exactly where the soda machines were at the university and would point the way. Turn, turn, she would then sign, pointing to the right and the left. She was just trying to make the ride longer. Coco's Pets before Coco had her first kitten named All Ball, she played with many small animals. Coco once befriended a blue jay. The baby bird had lost its mother, so I kept it in a cage and fed it many times a day. I took the caged bird to Coco's room. Open that, Coco signed. I opened the door and out flew the blue jay. Like that, nice have, she signed. Do you have a name for him, I asked Coco. Tongue, Coco answered. Yes, he has a tongue, but what will you name him? Tongue, he signed again. Maybe Coco chose that name because she saw the bird's tongue as it opened its mouth wide, asking for food. Coco was fascinated by the small tree frog she saw in her yard near the trailer. These little frogs could change color from green to red to gold. I wouldn't catch one for Coco at first because I was afraid she might accidentally hurt the tiny creature. But one day Coco found one in her playground. Underarm, she signed showing me where she gently kept her new friend. Coco carried the tree frog under her arm in a place that is shaped like a pocket. The, the gorilla can hold things there and move freely, but the tree frog jumped out. Then Coco would chase after it. Coco had played with other kittens before she had All Ball. But All Ball was the first pet Coco ever had of her very own. She signed Coco Love Ball, soft, good cat cat. Then, sadly, All Ball was killed by a car just before Christmas in 1984. I had to tell Coco what happened. At first, Coco acted like she didn't hear me. Later, she told us that she felt, with signs, cry, sad, frown. Michael also had a name for Coco's well, Coco got a new kitten, and she named the kitten Lipstick. Michael also had a name for Coco's new kitten, Banana. My cat, Red, Michael signed. He had been watching Coco and her new kitten, and he wanted a pet, too. So Coco's second kitten was given to Michael. Coco finally chose another, a soft gray one. Baby, she signed visit gorilla. 
Have you thought of a name yet for the kitten? I asked her. That smoke, she signed. Smoke, smoke, she answered. The kitten was a smoky gray, so we named her Smokey. When Coco is asked what her favorite animal is, she always signs gorilla. But Coco does not like all animals. She is afraid of crocodiles. I used to hang toy rubber alligators above objects she was not supposed to touch. They looked a lot like crocodiles to Coco, but now she's older and those rubber alligators don't scare her too much. Coco's Day When Coco was eight and Michael was six, we moved again. Again, now we live in a forested area in Woodside, California, where there is more room for both gorillas to play outside. Coco and Michael still live in a big trailer, but now they have their own bedrooms and their own kitchens. Coco wakes up by 8.30 every morning. Breakfast is usually cereal with milk and fruit. On most days, she has sign language lessons from 9 to 10 with her teacher. Coco now knows more than 500 signs. Two signs she is learning now are forget and what for. She also knows signs that stand for airplane, belly button, boring, and surprise. By 10 o'clock, Coco is tired of her lessons and needs a break. She signs, have Mike in. So Coco and Michael play together for about an hour. They might play with Coco's toys, but Coco is still jealous of Michael and isn't very good about sharing her things. She has a tricycle, dolls, storybooks, rubber dinosaurs, and a skateboard. She signs to Michael, do you want to ride the skateboard? But then she sits down on the board and scoots around the trailer slowly. She won't let Michael ride on her skateboard. At 11 o'clock, it's time to get back to work. Coco has reading lessons on many mornings. Coco and Michael also take tests. They make mistakes, but some mistakes don't seem like wrong answers to a gorilla. One test question asks Coco to point to two things that are good to eat. Coco saw pictures of a block, an apple, a flower, a shoe, and an ice cream sundae. Coco pointed to the apple and the flower of course. Sometimes Coco thinks she is being funny when she makes a mistake on purpose. She points to a picture of a bird's eye and signs nose. Then she grabs a toy key, places it on her head and says hat, signs Coco. Then she laughs and laughs and marches around the playroom, waving her hands and grinning. She can be a very silly gorilla. At noon, Coco has lunch, juice, fresh vegetables, and soybean cake or another protein. Can you say a long sentence about lunch? I ask her. She signs, love, lunch, eat, Taste it meat. Late in the afternoon, she has a snack. Both Coco and Michael like peanut butter and fruit sandwiches. One afternoon, a scientist who studies wild chimpanzees came to see Coco. I asked Coco, do you like people to stand up or sit down? when they are with you. She signed down. 
Coco likes quiet friends and is especially gentle with babies and older people. When she meets people for the first time, she gives them the blow test by blowing into their faces. Then she uses the sign she shows, to, she knows, to find out more about them. Coco likes to take photographs and will sometimes hold my friend Ron's camera if he lets her. Love camera, she signs. Dinner time is around 4.30 and the meal is always fresh vegetables. If she sees mushrooms or radishes on her plate, dirty stink, she signs. She will not eat them. Before bed, Coco goes off by herself for quiet time. Sometimes she looks through a stack of her favorite letters from children. Or Coco might play a scary game with her dolls and a dinosaur. Coco likes to look through her picture books too or play with Smokey. She brushes Smokey just the way I brush Coco. She keeps her little kitten very clean. At seven o'clock, it's time for Coco and Michael to get ready for bed. I take care of Coco while my friend takes care of Michael. Every night, Coco builds a nest just as gorillas do in the wild. She makes her bed by piling blankets, towels, old clothes, and rugs into a circular nest on top of a flat tire. Brush teeth, Coco signs. I brush her back teeth, but Coco can brush her front teeth by herself. I rub the leathery palms of her hands and feet with baby oil. That way, they stay smooth and soft. Tickle there, Coco signs after the tooth brushing. Coco, you know it's time for bed, I tell her. That red, she signs, pointing to my shirt. Coco is trying hard to change the subject, but now it's past her bedtime. Good night, Coco, I sign, and tiptoe out of the room. I go back to my own trailer, but Coco and Michael know that I'm nearby and that I will always be there if they need me. Now, in the epilogue, Dr. Francine Patterson says that she hopes one day they may be able to move to Hawaii because that's a tropical island and it is the kind of environment that lowland uh, gorillas grow up in and she thinks it will be more natural for them. So that's something that they think about for the future. And that is the story, Coco Story. <music> can purr, but they're, they're not, not perfect. perfect. Dogs have paws, they're, they're not flawless. Rabbits have fur, but go no further. Nobody's got it all. Cows can moo, but can't dance to the music. Sheep can baa, they can't twirl a button. Horses can run, but let me run this by you. Nobody's got it all. You just can't beat the competition Don't give up, you'll succeed on one condition Believe in yourself, know this ammunition Nobody's got it all Turkeys can gobble, forget about the IQ Ducks can wobble, because their feet are just two Hens can squabble, not much else to do Nobody's got it all Your team has no power, don't you fret If your minute waltz takes an hour You'll succeed yet, you'll blossom like a flower But nobody's got it all Nobody I said nobody I said nobody I mean nobody
nobody. I mean, nobody's got it all. At the end of each serendipity program, I like to show a craft that you could make if you would like to. This, of course, is a gorilla puppet. And you can move his head a little bit and have him. The funniest thing I thought with Coco was when, remember when Coco put a bucket over her head and ran all the way around the play playroom? I thought that was very cute. So you could do things like that with your puppet. Now the way you make it is this is just a plain small paper bag. And these are the patterns, the head and the body. Now, there, if you want, you can draw your own gorilla. You don't have to have these patterns. But if you want the patterns, what you can do is get your mom or dad to Google www.dancingcrayon.com. That's www.dancingcrayon.com. Or we'll, we can make some copies for you and have them there at the library. And then what you do is <clears throat> take the copies, color them however you want to color them, cut them out, and then glue them onto the little paper bag. And that's how you make a, a cocoa puppet, we'll call it. Now, next week, next Thursday, we're going to have a program called Unlikely Friendships. And this is the most interesting book because the friendships are so unusual. One of my favorites is <clears throat> The Seeing Eye Cat and the Blind Dog. I've never heard of a seeing eye cat. But what happened was uh, the cat was a little kitten when the family rescued it and brought it home and they already had a dog, a grown dog. And they didn't pay much attention to each other. They, you know, they weren't enemies. They didn't cause problems for each other, but they didn't pay much attention to each other until the dog got to be about 15 years old and started having trouble seeing and went blind. Then the cat started paying a lot of attention to the dog and helping the dog find his way so that he could find his water dish and find his food dish and not run into things. It, it's very interesting how the cat loved him and took care of him in his old age when he was blind. I'll show you one more. This book is full of these stories. And this is one that I can't wait for us to read. This one is called The Leopard and the Cow. Now look at them snuggled up there to each other. It's very unusual. This book is full of those kinds of strange friendships, and that's what we'll be talking about next week. I hope you tune in then. Thanks for listening.